Well, I'd like to share with you a discovery I made when I was in Saudi Arabia recently. And I was with a group that I lectured with uh, in Egypt, and then uh, they moved on to Saudi Arabia, and I just went with them kind of, as, kind of as a tourist. Here we are at the base of Mount Sinai at the end of our trip. And so here's the basalt that's at top of uh, Mount Sinai, and here I am coming up... Uh, had kind of an interesting climb, taking a picture there of the uh, collection of rocks that's at the top. Okay, so, uh, and there we are at the summit of Mount Sinai, some of the group I climbed with there. And then here we are at the Split Rock, one of the evidences of the Israelite journey uh, in the Exodus. Uh, there's evidence of erosion by this rock. It's a singular rock in this area. And there were other evidences of uh, some of the account of the uh, Exodus in this area. For instance, uh, at what's considered to be the uh, Golden Calf Altar site, there's all these uh, petroglyphs of Egyptian-looking cows that have the Hathor horns. Okay, so you can see that these Egyptian depictions of uh, cows are in those rocks, in the symbols on those rocks there. And... Uh, the, the goddess Hathor uh, is associated with the with these bulls. Okay, so here's the discovery. So we're, while we're in this area with all these different uh, potential evidences of the uh, Hebrew Exodus, I found this circle. Now, uh, I didn't know, you can see from this drone shot, which I was shown later, that there are many circles in the area. I had no idea. Someone just pointed out, uh, you know, the one that, that's in the red there, and then again, looking at this drone shot, I realized that there are other circles in the area. But all I knew about was uh, the one I showed you. And then uh, someone tweeted to me about these ancient stone circles in the Middle East desert. And then there's this article, and you can see pictured down there these, these circles that are in Syria and Saudi Arabia. Uh, so these mysterious circles, okay. And these are some of the shapes of these ones that are throughout the Middle East there. So I just picked on this one right here because it's the only one I knew about. Again, I was kind of a tourist. I wasn't really planning on doing the type of measuring I do when I'm in Egypt. So here, here's this circle. Now, someone in the group suggested that there, these were houses or something. But, you know, I, I don't think that's a door. This looks like a mini Stonehenge. And uh, again, there's the, uh, the, the view, and this is a Google Earth shot. You can see where the Tabuk Circle is. That's what I'm calling it, the Tabuk Circle, and Jebel al Laws, which is the Mount Sinai, and, and then where the Split Rock of Horeb is. So that's, that's where we are. So I made a field sketch there and took some initial measurements. You can see that there's a standing stone there and there, those two, and then there was a prominent one right there. The center stone was a little bit uh, uh, fallen over, and then out here, there was like a, uh, you know, a heel stone outside the circle. Now, homely sets of circles like this can be very profound, very Stonehenge-like. Here's Napta Playa down uh, in the southern part of Egypt. And uh, so Thomas Brophy's written a book about the profound revelations in that circle right there. Okay. So this Tabuk circle that I took measurements on, even though it looks like a homely circle, we can't, you know, just cast it off out of hand. So I just took some quick bearings on it, and it pointed to the Temple of Hathor in Dendera. I, I couldn't believe it. One of the main pointings I measured there. So in the bigger map of Egypt on the left, uh, down near the Omega part of the Nile, you can see where Dendera is. And on this close-up map of the Red Sea, that's where Dendera is in that curve in the Nile. And there's the Tabuk circle, and there was the pointing. It pointed right at this temple. And here we had found all these, you know, petroglyphs and markings of uh, Hathor cows. And then it points to the temple of Hathor. I, I was really shocked. And look at the way the Red Sea looks. Doesn't it doesn't look sort of like a Hathor cow? Those, the, the, the uh, you know, the, the horns there of the Gulf of Suez. Uh, interesting. Okay, so that there's the pointing right to the, the, the Temple of Hathor and Dendera. Now, where else does the Tabuk circle point? So here's the uh, pointing right there, 48 degrees northeast bearing. That's the one that pointed right to the Temple of Hathor and Dendera. So uh, this one right here uh, pointed to the standing stone from that, the one standing stone on the circle through the center out to a, another post that was out there. And that one pointed right to the split rock. 
Now the split rock, even though it's real close by, you can see here the split rock of Horeb is right near the Tabuk Circle. It's not visible from this circle. There's a, you know, a mountain range in between, and yet here's this pointing right, right at that you know, split rock. So I, I just had to believe these, these first two pointings I chased down were you know, pretty, pretty powerful. Now, when I chased down the 30 degree northeast one, uh, you know, I didn't immediately see anywhere it pointed. I checked down into Egypt, I didn't see it. it but then uh, when I looked clo closer, here is the uh, split rock, and I took the bearing there. There's a, a, a picture from my iPhone. It's a 30 degrees northeast bearing. And so when you go that way, it points right to Halit Amar, right on the border of Jordan. And uh, Halit Amar is like an oasis, there's water there. And one of the big problems all through Saudi Arabia is lack of water. There's no water. Now, someone told me that there's been a great, uh, you know, aquifer, a huge aquifer under almost all of Saudi Arabia. And if, it, if that's true, that would be like, you know, more, you know, precious maybe than the oil that, that's in some of the, these areas. So, uh, you know, I, I just thought that was interesting that it pointed right to this area where an oasis is. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what the the split rock is about you know water flowing out so uh my conclusions uh first of all you know there's a great need for further study of these circles the ones i wasn't aware of that are all through the the middle east there uh in jordan and saudi arabia and syria and of course the tabuk circle and the others that were right around it again i wasn't even aware until i saw the the drone footage about those and then the Tabuk Circle itself seems to be the work of the Hebrews who have left many other evidences in this area, such as the, the petroglyphs and uh, the, uh, the area of uh, the graveyard where it seems where the Levites were instructed to kill, thousands were killed. There's this graveyard which doesn't seem to have any Bedouin cultural uh, remnants, so it seems to be uh, another evidence. So it's another evidence that the Tabuk Circle seems to me that the Hebrews were in this area. Because of the singular pointing to the Temple of Hathor and Dendera, I was just really just shocked at that, really, that that was the, the first finding here. And then, is there a pointing to water, the Split Rock and Halat Amar? So, just want to share with you what I think was a very interesting find. Thanks for watching.